Now, some practical details about meditation. First of all, the space we are going to meditate. Theoretically, you can meditate anywhere. I have meditated on buses, on airplanes, on trains, and not while driving, of course. <laughs> uh, in nature, wonderful place to meditate. In churches, in houses, near rivers. Usually, however, you'll meditate in your house. Okay? Uh, and it's nice if you can set up a space there. It's not absolute, but it suggests if you can set up a special chair or a special bench or a pillow in the area in your house where this is an area which you will be meditating. This area will gradually absorb the vibrations of that activity. So that when you go there, as when you walk into a church, you get the vibration of the church. Because in that area, this activity is taking place. And the, the, the room takes on that energy. If you go into a bar, then you take the energy of the bar, of the nightclub. So every space absorbs the energy of the activity which takes place there. But you can meditate in it. But if you can create a place in your house, a corner of your bedroom, where you have a chair or a pillow or something, that's nice. <coughs> also, another small detail is if you want to cover yourself with the same shawl or the same sheet or the same blanket, or if some people even wear the same clothing when they pray or meditate. These are details, they are external details, they are not the essence. The essence is what's going on in the mind. But they help. They help. And they're small aids in this process. Uh, traditionally, one is asked to face east. But I usually just face a window or any open space. Rather than have an open window on our back or on our neck, letting the open space be towards the face. Um, there should be no one else in the room when you're meditating, uh, unless, of course, the other person is meditating, or perhaps sleeping, but if he snores, it may be difficult. As far as animals are concerned, it's better that they not be in the room, because they are very much attracted by the very peaceful vibration. They like to come and sit on them, something which disturbs, of course, your concentration. Uh, so it's better to put the animal out than that another room. As far as the telephone is concerned, it's better to disengage it, or if you've got an answering machine, in the phone, or if there are other people in the house, inform them that for 20 minutes, 15 minutes, a half an hour, that we would prefer that they would just write down any messages, and that you will call anyone back after this period of time. So this brings us to the point of explaining to the others what we are doing. It's important to, to uh, help our loved ones not be anxious about this, uh, this new activity. Uh, we're not changing religions. We're not going to go off to live in a cave. Uh, we're not going to shave our heads. Uh, uh, just explain it. You know, this is something that I have read about, I have heard about, and I want to see if it would help me become a better person, have more energy, be more peaceful. It's to your benefit if I'm more peaceful, if I'm more loving. So, uh, give me the space to, to try this out. It's better not to hide the fact. If you want to say that you're praying rather than meditating, that's not a problem because it's very close. Or relaxing, also very close. But they should know that for 20 minutes you're doing something uh, and you would not like to be disturbed. So it's best to explain that to the people and also to ask them how they feel, do any active listening, you know, that relax their, their anxiety. And the second factor is that the room should also be warm because the body usually relaxes. There's two kinds of reactions. I get warm when I'm there. But other people, most people get cold. But you can have both kinds of reactions. Okay? So it is good to for the room to be suitably warm, and if not, to have a blanket next to you that you can cover yourself with if you don't cover yourself with.